We finally got some play on the second afternoon at the 3A County Ground in Derby, where the home side again struggled with a bat in the 52 overs that were possible against Kent, for whom Doug Bollinger and Darren Stevens both claimed fifers. Mid afternoon, the players were out in the middle after Kent won the toss and inserted on the previous day. It took them only 13 balls to break through, with Bollinger trapping Stephen Moore in front on two. Bollinger has already proved to be an inspired signing for Kent, and it took some gutsy batting from Wayne Madsen again to keep him waiting for his next success. Stevens, meanwhile, was brought on as early as the 10th over and struck immediately. Paul Borrington going after a wide ball which he edged into the hands of Adam Riley in the slips. Next over, Madsen was also out with his side on 24 for 3. Bollinger striking again as the Derbyshire captain sliced an uncomfortable looking shot to Brendan Nash. Then on the stroke of T, Stevens got the big wicket of Shivnarine Chanderpaul who'd made only 5 when he was given out LBW. Scott Elston has waited an age for his first-class debut. He made a name for himself with a catch as a substitute in a test match at Trent Bridge. He now had a job to do on his Derbyshire debut. He did OK in making 23 the second-best score of the innings, and he didn't look too pleased when he was also given out leg before to Stevens, who was proving to be very difficult to get away. Apart from Elston, the only other home batsman to survive for any real length of time was Alex Hughes, who was playing in his first game of the summer. He worked the ball around as he added 46 runs for the sixth wicket with another debutant, Gareth Cross, who now has a second chance to prove himself after being released by Lancashire last year. This was the pick of Hughes's shots, a top edge really, that took the ball over the ropes for a six. To be fair, Derbyshire needed many more. Cross opened up his Derbyshire account with 15 runs, which stopped the rot for a bit, at least until he edged a ball from the returning and bustling Bollinger to Stevens. Bollinger was bowling with good pace and in his next over he also had David Wainwright caught behind, a wicket which left the home side in a real mess on 103 for 7. Tony Palladino then gave Bollinger his second five-wicket haul for his new county, Sam Billings with the comfortable catch behind before Rob Key pulled off a stunning catch at mid-wicket to get rid of Tim Grunewald. You can see just how good it was from the fielder's reaction. A delivery which was way too good for a number 11, then bowled Mark Footit. Stevens had figures of 5 for 24 from 20 and a half almost perfect overs, while Bollinger took 5 for 29 as Derbyshire, in spite of Hughes's undefeated 36, were all out for just 118. So Kent were left with three overs to survive and they were safely negotiated by Sam Northeast and Key, who reduced the deficit to 108 by the time that stumps were drawn. We may have been late in starting this game, but that Derbyshire innings, lasting only 49 and a half overs, has now moved this game on. Having won their last game against Surrey, Kent are suddenly looking a very confident team. Derbyshire now need to show some fight themselves on day three.